All right, guys, so I got the bike all loaded up. Um, what's going on today is we are taking the bike to my buddy Leroy's house. Um, one of the issues I'm having is the electric start doesn't work. So we're gonna take a look at my torque limiter. Um, one of the issues that I found online that seemed to be uh, a very well-known issue is the torque limiter slips and it doesn't let your electric start turn the engine. So if that's the case, I'm gonna film it and I'm gonna um, kind of do a how-to for you guys. Uh, I'll film as much as I can and I'll throw it up because there isn't a lot of videos on this and I think it's gonna help somebody. I search everywhere for this information. And the problem is, is most people have issues with the cam, uh, the decomp being worn out, the cam, the valves. My bike has very low hours. It shouldn't have these issues. The valves have been inspected, everything's good, the decomp's working, uh, it's got a new starter on it, uh, new battery, lithium. By all means, it should be cranking this thing no problem. So there's only one bolt that was holding on the water pump with the, the rest of the case? Uh, yeah. The rest the top one. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you can kind of save the gasket if you really want to. Uh, if you pay attention, take a screwdriver and like work it up. But since we have one, we don't really worry too much if we tear this one. Got two guide pins, one here. Pull these out, Eva. One here. This will help us when we put the new gasket on. We'll seat that one there and that one there. Put the gasket on, stick it back together. There's the starter. This is what we're looking at here, right? Mm -hmm. Look at this, chewed up a little bit, but not bad. Oh shit, look at that clutch plate. Why is it like that? Is it supposed to be like that? Maybe it is. See how it's outside the basket? Yeah. To me, it looks like something's not right. Uh -uh. But I don't know. Maybe, let's see how they double them here, though? Yeah. That looks okay. So maybe that's just how that rides, since they double these. Oh, maybe. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> well, usually uh, on yeah, a standard clutch, you wouldn't want to see a plate like that, because it, it can move, it can rotate, but this one can't. This thing pulled, just pulled out, but maybe we gotta take that. Pulls out once you have the bolt off? The bolt, yeah, <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we thought the recluse was gonna have like some kind of crazy way of taking it out, but Leroy says uh, it's pretty basic as long as you keep it all intact. Wait, so you didn't need the the tool? No, I told you because that was for the stator side. Oh. I thought we were gonna put a, a stator in it. <laughs> and then I realized that that stator was bolted to the cover, it's not behind the flywheel. So, okay. So we don't need it. I kind of laughed when I figured that out. I was like, oh no. So nut washer. Now, this is what they tightened, right? You remember the video we watched? Yeah. Cause this is the actual clutch mechanism. Yeah, they put it on the vise. Yep. And, uh... So what we think is going on is the starter is going ahead and spinning it and the torque limiter is just kind of spinning out without actually turning the engine over. Yeah. And probably when it's on like nice easy compression, that's when it does turn it over. So it's not completely useless, but pretty useless. <laughs> Yeah, if they, but I think they're thinking if they made this solid and it ever kicked back, it could break a gear. Right, because yeah. it does spin freely backwards. When I took the starter out, I can get a flathead in there. And turn it. And turn it backwards just fine, so. All right. Okay, I didn't record. Sorry, guys. So this is what we did. 
Um, the the write up that I saw this on says to turn it a eighth or a quarter of a turn. So if you were to cut this in four quarters here, and an eighth would be somewhere here in so, the middle. Somewhere here. <laughs> Less. <laughs> Ignore that one. <laughs> and uh, this turned pretty easy. So we, we have here. very light pressure on the bottom and uh, use the channel locks here. Nothing makes contact on this part here. So if you leave some teeth marks, it's fine. If you're worried about it, you know, then buy a new pulley. <laughs> <laughs> so we're punching down where we made the adjustment so we can keep track of it. Yep. And then that way also, if we take it apart again and it moves, know we that. know that something's not right. Because those marks will rub off. So we're gonna go try this out. Man, I'm excited. <laughs> Make sure the gear went all the way down. Oh. All right, so it's in. We decided to go with somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of a turn. And um, we're gonna see where that is because it was engaging, just not good enough. So. Everything else seems healthy. Nothing broken inside. Oh, and, it, and it shouldn't be because we, we got 40, 44 hours on this bike. This is what I got it with, so. What was the uh, torque on that? It says 8.8, .8, so 8 .8. I need to convert it to inch pounds. Okay. <clears throat> Which is probably pretty close to the 85 I got it, but we'll make sure. It's kind of nice when they label the bolt with the torque. Nice. <laughs> That's why you can't get that bolt mixed up. <laughs> you can't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> this is your your star, and this goes into um, the drum. So right now you can see it's a neutral, how it's on that half moon, right? But when you're shifting the gears, this is what's clicking. <laughs> Right? Okay. This goes over the shifter. Nice. You can see it. So that's why you feel that little tiny. And when you're looking for neutral, that's why that's kind of tricky to that's find. That's why you right? can't find it. <laughs> that's why you can't find it. All right. So Leroy's going to put this back together while I go get some oil. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I can't film all of this stuff, but I wanted to get to the good stuff because that's the part that it's really hard to find out there. There's plenty of videos out there on how to take this stuff apart. Um, maybe not the recluse so much but we were able to take it out in one piece without disturbing anything. Oh, we do got to check the adjustment on the the but, spacing. Nice. And I didn't mean to. I was just trying to crank <laughs> it over a little bit to get the fluid, fluid cranking. It's like, oh man. We're excited because we got that recluse oil. Yeah, so good Don't necessarily need it. The site says that we can use regular oil. Um, the back side takes a quart, front takes like 0.6. I think it's 0.6. Yeah, I think that's right. Here we got it all buttoned up. Man, that cover is nice and clean still. <laughs> the one thing I haven't scraped yet. <laughs> I hit that side yet. Wait till I show you the back side of that colder intake. <laughs> <laughs> it's just silicone holding that fucking mesh on there. It's all right. It works though. Yeah. Could have used a little Gorilla Glue, maybe. Yeah, I didn't have any. I, didn't I, have any of that. I worked with what I had. <laughs> so we're gonna put that uh, out. This is gonna be interesting. Okay, so some people uh, on YouTube talk about not necessarily going with the manufacturer spec for the engine. They overfill it a little bit. Uh -huh. And so that's a little more important, especially on motors where you're feeding the crank. You know what I mean? If it's if it's a crankshaft where this is separate, so you they probably do overfill the crankshaft side a little, maybe okay. put 0.7 or 0.8 in it to make sure that this never gets down too low when it's under high revs. Okay. But for the transmission side, you should be able to fill it to spec. Would that be more for like track uh, use? Mm, and maybe if you're running off the rev limiter all day and it's just yeah. under the moon that the. What about might... 12 o'clock wheelies? <laughs> no, that should be fine. Everybody does 12 o'clock wheelies. Not me, man. <laughs> you don't do I do like two foot wheelies at two, the most right now. Wheelies. I'm working. I'm working my way up there. That's funny. It takes a little while to learn how to stand them up on one wheel. Do you think that torque limiter was was 
was the issue then? I think so. Oh, man. All right, try it out. Let's see what it does. Turn the key on. Still in neutral. Kind of hold back up on. And I'll double them up, double wrenches up when I tighten them, get them really tight. I'm glad the last guy didn't work on that because it would have been stripped <laughs> too. Right? Parts you got to match it. Yeah, the scraped ones. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, did it? Oh man. It's got some character now. <laughs> right. I wonder if you can flip these spacers. I wonder if they're designed to do that. Or you can flip them like that. Sure seems like they'll they'll go either way. Because that would sure help on the adjustment. that way you're gonna run out but if you go this way yeah I don't see why not yeah I don't see why not it's got a long side and a short side so this uh this electron carb comes with the flimsiest hose ever <laughs> this is like something out of a fucking fish tank and I love your review on that. <laughs> for, my, <laughs> for my KTM, it's if you put it too short, it collapses right here. And it already wants to collapse. So if you do a nice little circle, it keeps it from doing that. And the problem is, is if we use a regular hose, it kind of does the same thing. So it's too short of a spot. So I think this is going to fix our issue put a hose around it to keep it from collapsing and tie strap there to their smaller one which is these down here are really thick these don't collapse even the fucking vents don't collapse but the main fuel fuel line does that makes tons of sense you see how thick these ones are yeah these plastic ones that's good why the fuck couldn't this one be the same <laughs> i don't know Sure think it would be, wouldn't you? Yeah, so this is the same deal with like the instructions. They're awesome instructions. Dude, I'm so excited it starts this, right the up. The suspension is awesome on it. I mean, I thought my YZs always had, and they did, have phenomenal. That thing feels very good. The rear, 
is a little stiffer than a linkage style, but it doesn't matter because it's nice that you don't have the linkage hanging down. You guys talk about that for like going over the... Uh... This is where Leroy lives. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Come on out, you can ride from my door. <laughs> yeah, come out here and just start test driving. He flew off of this fucking corner right when he tested the bike. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm just in short. You guys need your bike fixed in Arizona. This is the guy to see right here. here He's probably the fastest mechanic I've ever seen. And he can talk and work at the same time. That's like, that's a miracle. <laughs> Um, you guys, I'm so stoked. Like, I, I can't believe that torque limiter was was the problem. Like, man, it was it was starting to seem hopeless. Like, first I thought it was the cam uh, decom, which is like a $380 part, and it's a low hour bike. So you're like, why? It, there's no way it could be like messed up, right? And then we're like, okay, so maybe it's the battery, which it was part of it because the old battery that was on there was a like, crappy AutoZone battery. So I put a lithium battery on there and that, that cranked good, but then it would still keep doing the same thing. So I'm like, oh my God. And then the kickstart wasn't working. So I'm like, if the kickstart wasn't working, then there's something else going on. But the kickstart issue was the bike was running too rich. The idle jet needed to be stepped lower. Uh, here in Arizona, what I needed for my KTM was a size 40 idle jet. And that fixed all my issues. Um, so, but now I have the Electron. So, Electron's the way to go. Um, if you guys got any questions, drop a comment below. If you guys have another way of helping someone else out uh, with the same situation, drop it on the comments. We're all here to help each other out. Uh, if you're looking at this video, it's probably because you have a KTM and you have a similar issue. So I'm hoping that this um, helps someone and relieves some of that stress of having to just dump parts into your bike, right? new starter new battery new these are the things that people get so a new starter that's 280 bucks or 60 to 150 for a knockoff version right that's all money down the drain because that's not the issue so i have a spare starter now if anybody wants to buy one uh, i can send it over to you guys i did well maybe i'll keep it as a spare scratch that <laughs>